Welcome to True of You. I'm Julie Van Gore. And I'm Jamie Shaver. Today's guest is going to leave you in awe, not only because of the woman she is, but because of the God she serves. I'm Julie Van Gore. And I'm Jamie Shaver. I don't think the young men out here realize just how precious and priceless life is. Just in a flick, your life can be literally over and it affects your whole family. My son, he was murdered 10 years ago. He was shot seven times in Hill District. The type of pain you experience when your child is murdered, you can be in a room with a thousand people and not one of them can help you. No one can reach you in that place but God. In spite of me raising my son from a good home, providing everything for him, he still made some wrong choices and some of those decisions cost him his life. When they called me to come and identify his body at Presbyterian Hospital in Oakland, it was, it was like one minute your life was normal and then the next minute it was just totally, it's almost like taking a glass and just dropping it in the floor and it just shatters where your whole life is now in a million pieces and you don't have a clue how to begin to pull it all back together. It was um, hard for me to identify his body because he was in a blue body bag. He was naked, the body bag was halfway zipped and I remember rubbing his head thinking, Oh my God, he's, he's still warm, he's still warm. Thinking that it was hope, but he was gone. Welcome to True View. Today's guest, Tammy Summers, is going to leave you in awe of the great God that we serve and give you a hope that we can only find through Christ Jesus. I'm gonna share a little bit about her and her background. Tammy Summers is from Pennsylvania and ever since she was a young child believed that Jesus had died for her sins. But it wasn't until she was 27 and actually watching a TV show, that she chose to give her life fully to Christ and recognized that she needed a deeper relationship with Jesus. This was the beginning of her faith walk with God, where he began preparing her for what he knew would be a very difficult road ahead. This all started during the pregnancy and birth of her first son. She is currently the senior high youth leader for the band at New Life Christian Ministries in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, and the co-founder with her husband of the Alex Summers Foundation. Tammy, we are so glad that you are here with us today. Thank you. So God, you know, was preparing you for a difficult road. And tell us a little bit about that road, about starting with your pregnancy and your son and the condition he was diagnosed with. Yeah. Well, I, at about um, 20 weeks pregnancy, I had found out by a sonogram that um, he had a rare form of dwarfism. And um, we were told by the perinatologist, you know, you've got a couple options here. You can carry this child, uh, but it's not likely that the child would make it to term because usually the chest is small, lungs won't develop, and they die at birth. Um, or you've got the option to abort the baby. So my husband and I were devastated at that time, but we knew that we needed to trust God with the situation, and um, we put it in his hands. and. Uh, just prayed that he would just take us through another 20 weeks of that pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And after your son was born, what happened then? So we were preparing that our child would die at birth, and we were hoping we'd have a few minutes with him, and he came out crying. And I hear <laughs> to this. To everyone's surprise. Right? right, we had a son named Matthew, and um, he's crying, and they handed him to me, and I 
thought well, maybe the diagnosis was wrong. So I peeked under the blanket and I saw his little chest. I saw the little arms and his feet just stuck out of his diaper. And I thought, no, he's got dwarfism. Um, and so we stayed in the hospital for nine days and we went home on a hospice consult um, waiting for him to die. So Tammy, once you brought Matthew home, what was it like in your home? What was required th to care for him? Well, initially, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, the hospice nurse said to me after three weeks, I think we need to get him into regular care. So uh, after a series of tests, we found out he had a, a more uh, rare form of dwarfism. He ended up being one of four living children in the world with this oh type of gosh. dwarfism. And so um, he did require minimal oxygen and a feeding tube because he was very, very small mm -hmm. and to prevent pneumonias. Um, and he actually was doing very well over a two and a half year period. And two and a half years. years. Almost two <laughs> and a half years. The doctors were very impressed. Um, they said, you're taking great care of him. But we know that God was, you know, sustaining him and watching over him. Uh, so uh, what we did was um, I worked and I had nursing care that took care of him during the day. And after uh, over two years, uh, he had an ear infection. We were waiting for his tube to be replaced in his ear. His fever went to 104, went to the hospital. Um, and unfortunately, they weren't able to get IV hydration into him. They weren't able to get an IV, and the fever went to 106.5. Were you just panicked? Actually, no, because I, I, I don't panic in situations. God just always gives me that calm. I just, I just kept trusting him, knowing he's in you know, he's in control, he's within his hands, he's gonna take care of this. Um, and so he actually went into shock and over a five day period his organs were shutting down. So what had happened is the high fever caused massive brain damage and on the fifth day we were told that um, there was no brain activity left and therefore we had to take the next step to take him off of the ventilator. Um, so we called our family in, brought our daughter down to How the old hospital. was your daughter at that she time? She was uh, almost eight years old at the time. Okay. Yeah, and um, I remember her saying to the pastor, "Is Matthew seeing G or is he seeing angels yet?" Mm. And uh, <laughs> and so we we prayed at bedside and prayed that God's will would be done in this situation. And as they were praying, this light shone through the ICU window and just shone on Matthew. Mm -hmm for the time that he said, may God's will be done. And then the light just went away and it had been raining. It was dark and cloudy. So this was a moment and we knew that God was about to call him home. So when we took him off the ventilator within five minutes, he died. And Julie, I wanna ask you, because I know as a mentor and teacher, um, you've worked with a lot of people who needed hope in these dark moments. What do you say when they get to the why God questions? I think the first thing, is to understand if you've not been there, you don't completely understand what someone else is going through but as another person, but to know that we have a God who completely understands, who has never left, who doesn't make mistakes, even if we don't understand in the scripture you were starting to mention, Tammy, that God's ways are higher than our ways, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so much higher are His ways. And even though we may not understand the whys, we can always look to the who and know he is the one who is in control, that he knows best, that he did love Matthew yes. more than you ever could, mm -hmm. and that he gave him to you. And you may not understand all the reasons until you go to heaven and are, are reunited with him, mm -hmm. but to be able to trust in the goodness of God, even in the midst of that trial. Yes. What about your husband? Um, the two of you obviously are going through this together, mm -hmm. and I know it's a very, very high percentage of couples who suffer the death of a child end up in divorce. Yes. What was happening in the home environment um, after the funeral and, and as the time was going by, um, both with you and your husband, and even how was your daughter responding? Well, um, I think we were all on different planes of grieving. Initially, for me, I was the one that he didn't have head control, so I held him. I missed that holding and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in touching him. My husband felt a sense of relief because Matthew was out of all of his suffering. So I didn't think that he was really grieving like he should have been, uh, you know. And uh, yeah. But years down the road, did we really, the grief affected him much more deeply, um, and he became more depressed. 
Okay. Julie, when people are suffering uh, a loss in this way, what are some of the uh, tips that you can give them to help maintain that closeness as a family unit? Talking about it openly, um, to be able to share, and I think when you have someone who is going through that pain, just being there to be available to understand and to listen and to do all you can first to pray to the Lord to give you God's heart for that other person suffering. I mean, as much as you were suffering the loss of a baby that you're holding for your husband to lose his only son, and uh, even as you're just, you know, describing that to think, He's looking and saying, you have, you know, we have our daughter, which is wonderful, but I've lost my son. Mm -hmm. And to be there as that um, one who will pray to the Lord and ask and say, Lord, give me the heart to love this person in the midst of that and to know when to speak and when to remain silent and to not be easily irritated, mm -hmm. um, I would imagine would be one of the things, but that would be something I would certainly suggest to the person. And also the the joy of knowing that we have a risen Savior who is the man of sorrows, mm -hmm. who is acquainted with grief, that when you are grieving, we don't have a, as it says in the scriptures, a, a priest that can't understand, but a high priest who in every way understands everything that we've gone through. There isn't a temptation. And in fact, I was recently talking with someone who'd lost their father, and I said to him, you know, Jesus, we're 99% sure, knew what it was like to lose a father because at the cross there's no record that Joseph was there, you know, in terms of an mm -hmm. earthly father. Mm -hmm. And just the comfort of knowing and being able to express when your, your loved one is sorrowful that we have a God who completely and thoroughly understands that. And when we come back, we're going to find out just exactly how Tammy has that peace that God promises will surpass all understanding. We'll be right back. The turning point for me from becoming bitter to better was a conscious decision because God told me, he said, well, this can either make you better or bitter and I chose to get better because I was literally stuck there paralyzed in fear. I could not see how God could use me at all. Welcome back. We were just talking with our guest, Tammy Summers, as she described to us the devastating loss of one of her two children, her son, Matthew, at the age of two and a half. Um, Tammy, I want to move on in your story. Uh, I'm sure you didn't expect what was going to happen next. Tell us a little bit about your daughter, Alex. Um, well, Alex, first of all, she was just full of life uh, she, from a very young child. She just had this radiant smile. Um, and just very compassionate and a loving child. But at the age of nine is when she really made that commitment to trust Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And I, I could just see over the years how she um, was living out her faith by an example of loving people, no matter mm -hmm. what walk of life they were from. Tell us about the last night that you saw your daughter, Alex. Where was she going? What was she doing? Okay. Well, at that time, she was 17. She was a senior in high school and she was going to her boyfriend's house that evening. It was a school night. You, normally we didn't allow that on a school night, but she was going to be spending time with his brothers and helping with And homework. why was that important to her? She, because he had three younger brothers and I, she missed that with her brother and mm -hmm. she loved being over there. And she was the big sister. They yeah. loved having her. And half the time she didn't hang out with her boyfriend. She played with the little brothers or helped with <laughs> homework. Mm -hmm. right. So she enjoyed that. Um, so before she left, um, I, you know, I gave her a hug and a kiss and I told her how much I loved her and she left. And uh, as the evening went on, uh, I had dozed off on the couch and at about 10.05 p.m. I jumped up out of my seat and looked at the clock and noticed what time it was and I started pacing and um, looking in the garage to see if her car was there. I called her boyfriend at about 10.15, and he said she left almost 20 minutes ago. And so and how I, far away did he live? Just within five minutes. So I think every parent can 
uh, yes. understand. I'm that already urgent. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. And normally I wouldn't worry, but that night I, I felt this sick feeling. And so what I did was I said to my husband, he was in the basement, I said, Alex isn't home. We, something's wrong. We have to go now. So we knew the route she took. We drove over to the road where uh, there was flares on the road. And I immediately knew she had been in an accident. And uh, they let us down the road. And, and I want to stop you right here. Yes. You see the flares. What, what's going through your head? In my head, I was thinking that she was in an accident. And I remember, oh Lord, you know, I was questioning, did something happen? Was she killed in a car accident? Was my first, my first feeling. But I thought, oh no, he wouldn't take another child of mine. And, um, but I remember there was a sense of calm and he let us down the road and we pulled up and we got out of the car and the first thing we saw was a, a white sheet on her car and the car was the opposite direction. It was very confusing. And I knew when I saw the white sheet, I, I knew she was gone. And we got out of the car and the police came towards us and said, ma'am, you can't go near the car. And I just remember this, the, the fire chief came up and said to me, uh, she's gone. And I said, I can't do this again. I've already lost one child. I can't go through this again. And I just remember just God just sending his spirit down upon us. It was like, I call it like a God shock. I don't know how <laughs> else to describe it, but he, he gave it to us when we lost our son. He gave it to us when we lost our daughter. And it was like a surreal scene, almost like I was up above looking down on the scene. And it was calm. Like he was carrying you. Yeah, he was carrying us. There's no question that night. And I called my pastor and he came to the scene. And, and prayed over her life. I mean, she was gone, but um, and thank God for her life. So you didn't see her again? No. And that last her. time that you saw her was when you gave her that kiss goodbye yes. and said, I love you. Yes. And Julie, how important is it when God tells us to number our days? It's essential, Jamie. We never know. Mm -hmm. We never know with any of us what tomorrow might bring. The Lord alone knows, and He does tell us to number the days, to make the most of every opportunity, and the comfort that you can have, Tammy, in knowing that your daughter was living, mm -hmm. that she knew Jesus, and that you were absolutely reassured that she went from one place of glory to glory That's in right. the presence and the arms of the Lord. It's so important, though, because we can so easily get our eyes fixed on the things that are temporary and the numbering of our days, so we live for the things that really matter, and it, it just so sounds like that's Tell me what um, your daughter Alexis did. Yes. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, as you and your husband got home that night and you began to really absorb the reality of what had just happened, what questions were going through your mind? Was it the same question you had when you experienced your son's death? No. No, the, the change was all I could pray because I was just so broken. All I could pray was, Lord, help me to see this through your eyes and show me how you're going to use this for good and for your glory. And um, it was just one thing after another that he was showing us how he was going to use it for good. That's, that's, we just praise God for that. And Julie, why is it so important? Just quick, we've only got about 30 seconds here um, that we see things through God's eyes because his eyes are really the only ones that can see everything clearly, that he's got the eternal perspective. Yes. We are stuck in this world and have that temporal, and he alone knows the beginning from the end because mm -hmm. he is the Alpha and the Omega that he knew from the day that he brought her into you know this earth and was knitting her together in your womb, yes. what her life purpose was going to be, and he, he completed that purpose in her. And don't you find it amazing and something to really celebrate to think that there are some people who live their whole lives? She lived for the very purpose that all of us are put on this earth, which is to bring glory to God. Yes. She did that. And there are people who are 90 years old and they've literally never, they may live chronologically a long time, but they've never lived for the reason they were ever born. Right. When we come back, we're going to hear about just how good Again, God is in the good he's actually brought through this painful sorrow. We'll be back. God's word is life changing, but some people just don't know how to study it, especially when they have a specific issue or need in their life. What if you had this? 
I want to introduce you to a topic-specific Bible study in a box where you will learn, pray, and conquer life's challenges through this easy-to-use Bible study so you can live victoriously. Through this study, you and your friends and family will receive the life-changing power of God's Word in a simple, effective way. This study contains 52 cards that have a scripture on one side and a prayer relating to that scripture on the reverse side. You can use the study in its entirety or one card at a time in so many different ways. Be inspired during your family devotionals. Your child will be inspired at bedtime. Read a new one each day before work. Or simply send them to friends and family who might need encouragement. The sky's the limit. To order the Bible study in a box, simply visit trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link. Bible study in a box is a great tool for memorizing scriptures and learning to pray effectively. Don't hesitate. Go to trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link at the top of the page to order today your Bible study in a box. Take your faith to a new level and order today. Romans 8 28 promises us that God can make all things good for those who love him his promises are true and he is a faithful God Tammy share with us the good that has come from this yes. well Alex's funeral service was a celebration of her life there was nearly 80 people that stood up and said how she had impacted Mm. Oh my they're alive and we hope in our lifetime that one person would stand up at our funeral service <laughs> yeah. uh, but through that what he did was he he convicted my husband's heart because my husband said I didn't love people like Alex did I was going to church I was reading my Bible every day he said but I didn't love people he goes I didn't know him and that night he got down on his knees and just asked mm -hmm. God to forgive him and lifted up his hands and said take control of my life and I can tell you today that I'm married to a completely different man. Like this is a supernatural change because the week before her accident, I've been praying, Lord, do whatever it takes to make my marriage what it should be in your eyes. And not that he caused this, but this is how he's using it for good. And he's, he's humble, he's kind, he loves people, he reaches out to people, he evangelizes. It's amazing, her testimony of faith um, has led him. Mm -hmm. um, to this relationship with Jesus that he was missing. In thinking about um, all the good that can come from it, why is it so important that we maintain that eternal perspective in our lives? Because we're eternal beings. You we, really heard children aren't dead, are they? Yes. Not at all. They're more alive now than they've ever been. And yeah. people who don't understand Jesus and don't understand the promises of God and the fact that Jesus is a life giver, yes. we can look at that in a whole different perspective. But for us to say, you're going to see them again. There is no question and again that she lived her life yes. for the very purpose. She impacted lives. How many people can say that their life has impacted others and hers not just for temporary purposes, but for all eternity? And that not will, only will you see Alexis um, again, but these her friends and yes. other people who've in, been impacted, that ripple effect of a life that is lived for the very purpose that you're put on this earth, which is for the glory of God. And I'm certain that other people, whether it be in the community, her friends, who look at your hus you and your husband yes. now mentoring, coaching, guiding, teaching, and see the peace that you have. Yes. I remember even the first time I had an opportunity to speak with you, I left and thought the very fact she can sit and share the story with us gives glory to God, yeah. that he can bring a peace in our lives that does transcend what's actually happening right here before us, mm -hmm. especially when we have these tragic things where we say, Lord, I don't think I can do this. Yes. And he says, you know what, you're right, mm -hmm. but I can. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what what, wh wh at what point did you and your husband decide to start a foundation, the Alex Summers Foundation? Actually, uh, Alex was a competitive gymnast, and her gymnastics club, the board, started um, the foundation. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, um, but we were so thankful. People just started donating, and people from the community stepped up and said, hey, I want to do a Zumbathon. Her gymnastics club says, we're going to do an annual Alex Summers Invitational Gymnastics wow. Meet to support this fund. 
uh, and people continue to say, hey, what can I do to raise funds for this foundation? And what does your foundation do? Uh, what we do is we give faith-based scholarships to se graduating seniors. My daughter was a high school student at Knock in Saxonburg, but we also open that up to surrounding schools in the area so they can apply online. Um, there's two questions that they have to answer. Who is Jesus Christ to you and how are you putting your faith into action? And wh how did you come up with those two questions? Why those two? Well, we thought that that was what she, she was living out her life. Okay, so she, she, Jesus was evident in her life and she was putting her faith into action daily. Our pastor also guided us uh, because, uh, you know, we just need a little bit of advice getting this set up. And so uh, we came up with those two questions. We thought that those were most important. And it's amazing the testimonies that I've read with, you know, from kids that are 17 years old. And what they're doing to and honor the And what they're Lord. doing, absolutely. When I hear what you say about Alexis and mm -hmm. having not had the privilege of meeting her, but she was a doer of the word, yes. not just somebody who talked about her faith, but she lived her faith yes. and to see the impact that she had, but now to see how you and your husband are living out your faith and think of the fruit that is being born because of, again, the belief that your daughter had that yes. ended up impacting not just other people's lives, but your, your own family and your own marriage is just such a a glory to behold. And that is why I think he calls us to be the salt and life of the earth, the salt and light of the earth. And we do that when we're following in his way and in his footsteps. And obviously your whole, I mean, you and your husband are just radiate that. Thank you so much for being with us today. None of us know what tomorrow is going to bring, and your story certainly really brings that home. But what we can know is that God is the one who holds the future, but how important it is, just like you did, Tammy, of hugging your daughter and telling her that you loved her, that we tell the people in our own lives every day how much we love them. I think mm -hmm. about the fact that I never hang up for my kids who are all out of my house now without every phone call being, I love you. And just for them to be assured of that, not just words, but again with actions, but more importantly, that we let people also know that God loves them. That that is really where that only safe place is in the, in the almighty and everlasting loving arms of God that obviously Alexis knew all about. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like more information on the Alex Summers Foundation, you can find that at alexsummers.org. There's also a link that will take you there at our ministry's website. That's trueviewministries.org. See you next time.